Welcome to Final Third TV. This week we'll analyse Mauricio Pochettino, his emphasis on coaching and his emphasis on playing young players at Spurs. With me to discuss Pochettino and his coaching methods is Rob Palmer. Hello. Hello Rob. Fire away. Right. <laughs> Where does his emphasis lie? I've got lie? stats and things written down on my lovely iPad. It's so like, uh, the, the first thing I want to talk about is like, um, I mentioned earlier on in another pod, another video pod that, um, like, how, for example, Harry Redknapp doesn't really coach. He just sort of buys players and fills holes. Sure. So like, Potch is like the complete opposite of that. Like, he's he's someone who coaches players to play a role that he wants them to play in his system. Like, Victor Wanyama is probably the best example of that. Couldn't pass the ball more than five yards yeah. before he came. Looked like he was going to flop. Yeah, he exactly. Flop, yeah. yeah. And then he was one of the best, <clears throat> one of the best um, holding the fittest in the league. Arguably, what I'd say that's a boy. No, no, I, I, I think he's, yeah, I think he's yeah, phenomenal. Plays but, um, well. He does, but um, I think I think like I can't give Coleman credit for that as much as I love Coleman because like he basically went in and he was already ready made to play the way Coleman wanted to play because of Pochettino's coaching. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. that's fair. That's, that's fair. fair. Like, it's very big of your own. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, and then just like he like Pochettino has brought like his this um policy of developing the youth to Spurs because they're the youngest starting eleven in the league, like by a mile, and um. Eight of Spurs starting eleven are twenty four or younger, which I mean is like considering that they're they're, they're chasing for the top four yeah. is pretty is pretty good. Like I mean, if they were like languishing in the mid table, it'd be like, oh well, that's the reason why he's not doing that. Can't playing kids. kids exactly. Yeah. Adam Hansen, you beautiful man. But um, another another like player who's come who's come to the four for Spurs this season is Lamella. Like he gets a lot of flack. He's got five assists and one goal, which is, which which you'd say is not what it's, you'd want from it's your not thirty million club. pound. No, goal, exactly. It's getting there. But I mean, if the thing you have to look about, the thing you have to look at with Lamella is um, how much work he does defensively now for Spurs. I mean, the reason why he doesn't get goals and the reason why he doesn't get assists is because he completely shuts down whatever side he's playing yeah. on. Like, I mean, if you look, like, I mean, he's playing in front of Danny Rose, and he's making Danny Rose like a good fullback. That, that says it all. Like, I mean, I'm not I, like <laughs> he was central as well, Lamella, when uh, when Spurs were fighting back against West Ham, which was yeah, like, he the was. The weekend. Yeah, he was. He was. Well. And, he, and he was excellent there as well. Because mm. I mean, lovely like, cross for the ball. Oh, I know in Serie A he's more of a goal scoring guy but he is a lovely cross with the ball he, yeah. he hits it beautifully like. but um, another, another couple that like um, deserve a lot of credit is Mason and Bentaleb mm-hmm. um, like I mean you look you look at what they do and it's it, it's sort of it's they're, they're both players who kind of do things under the radar that you wouldn't really notice unless someone pointed it out to you yeah. like I mean I didn't really notice like before I wrote this I didn't really notice what Bentaleb was doing other than the stats that I read but I watched him in the North London Derby and he was phenomenal like his pass range is great and then Mason is like a perfect dovetail it's like the Javi Alonso Mascherano partnership that Liverpool had like I mean high, high press whoa. I mean I don't high mean press. I don't mean they're, 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 <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, mean they're yeah, that yeah. good but it's the same sort of thing I mean yeah. like, one's attacking they complement each other exactly yeah. they dovetail well yeah. if you want to use a woodwork term I don't know why but um, like I mean like this is another thing with, another thing um, Pochettino's done is, is instead of using the players he already had and the previous managers have tried and failed to make work in the centre of the pitch like you look at Paulinho and like Sandro, for example, or Capu and one of the other two. And Bailey. And Bailey as well, as well. yeah. Like think. neither of them have, have, have worked at all, really. And then he's come in and he's played these two young fellas and they've been absolutely brilliant. And like, I mean, Paulinho and all them are a good squad player to have, but when a manager comes in and sets a stamp on a team by playing the younger junior members of the squad instead yeah. of the seasoned veterans who get paid a lot more money than they do, it just shows that like how, how much he trusts in, in these young guys and how how he wants them to like mould them into his own system, which is which is nice to see. It runs through the squad as well, doesn't it? I suppose with Eric Dyer. I mean, I know he was bought in, but it was on the cheap, and then Harry Kane as well. So. Yeah, it's like it, it's consistency, which is nice. Yeah, nice to see. So there you have it. A little bit of love for Pochettino and Spurs. We bloody love coaching at the final third. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments in the section below, and don't forget to subscribe to Final Third TV. You can check out our website, thefinalthirdpodcast.net, where all our previous pods, including this week's pod, are available. Follow us on Twitter at the final underscore third and Facebook the final third. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm.